Hey guys, Hermit here. Welcome back to my channel. In this video, I want to talk to you about my top 10 tips on setting up your brand new X100V. All right, the first setting that I've got is shoot without card. This setting is quite important because it lets you shoot uh, the camera without card. By, by default, from the factory, the camera will ship with this setting on. I always turn this setting off. So where do you do that? Navigate to menu, down to the wrench icon here. Then we will move to buttons and dial settings. Down the bottom, you will see shoot without card. So the first thing I will do on any camera is find this setting and turn this off. I don't have a card in my camera. When I try and shoot and press the shutter button, I will get a message on the screen that will tell me that there's no memory card on the camera. Now, the next setting I want to customize is the image quality. This is available in the IQ menu and navigate to image quality setting and by default, it will be set to fine. I always go and change that to fine and raw. This way, when I am shooting, uh, I am getting a beautiful JPEG with all the uh, film simulations and settings uh, applied to it. However, I'm also getting a raw file which I can further process in Capture One Pro later on my computer. So the next setting we'll optimize are the screen settings. We'll navigate down to the wrench icon, go to the setup screen and navigate down to display custom settings. Now here we have two options, the OVF and the EVF LCD. I'm gonna apply these same settings on both. So the first thing I'm going to do is activate the framing guides. I love having the electronic level and I also want to see the AF distance indicator. So I know I'm focusing in the right spot. As a guide, I can see how further away the, uh, the, the primary subject is. So go to the EVF LCD and I will activate the framing guides, electronic level and AF indicator. Now when I switch, you will see the camera has the level and that's available in both the EVF and the OVF. Now I'm looking through the OVF and I have all the settings available. That'll make shooting experience a lot more fun. Now, the next setting I will change is long exposure noise reduction. This is available in the image quality menu and that's the IQ icon. Long exposure NR, noise reduction. Now I always wanna take that off. Um, as I'm shooting JPEG and RAW, I don't really care about the long exposure noise reduction. What this does is if you're taking a 10 second exposure, the camera will spend another 10 seconds after taking the exposure to reduce any noise from the sensor. I can do that in Capture One, so I don't really need the camera to do it. I wanna take the shot and then I'll be ready for the next shot. The next setting I will change is the shutter type. The camera is equipped with a mechanical shutter and electronic shutter but by default, the camera is only going to use the mechanical shutter. So to activate that option, I will go down to the camera icon and I will scroll through until I get to shutter type, which is here. And MS indicates it's manual shutter. Move across and I will activate both mechanical and electronic shutter. So the next setting is the auto ISO setting. What sort of ISO do you want to push the camera to when you're shooting in auto mode? Now, normally I shoot with the prescribed ISO setting that I want, but sometimes it is fun to let the camera do all of the things. So I set the settings to auto and I just focus on taking the pictures. So this is also available in the camera icon menu uh, under ISO auto settings. And you have three different options, auto one. So the default ISO setting will be 160. The maximum it'll go up to 800 and it's trying to achieve a shutter of 1 60th of the same. Uh, now these cameras are really good at high ISO as well. So the one I'm using is the Auto 3. I don't mind the camera getting pushed to 3200 ISO and I want to keep a minimum shutter of 1 60th. This camera doesn't have any image stabilization. So if you're like me and you struggle to get stable shot, this is perfect. The next setting I want is the power management in this camera. So to adjust that, I go down to the wrench icon, navigate to power management, and you'll see the auto power off is set to two minutes. That's a long period of time. These cameras have tiny batteries. So 
in my camera, I always set this down to 30 seconds. 30 seconds, I'm not using it. Turn the camera off, preserve the battery. Makes sense to me. So next, I wanna optimize the film bracketing settings, the film simulation bracketing settings. So to adjust this setting, we move to the camera menu. We navigate to film simulation bracketing. And here you can choose your three bracketing settings. So when the camera takes a picture, it will apply three film simulations to it of your choice and create three separate JPEGs. So what I want is across red, that's perfect. Then I like to shoot also in classic negative. And the last one is Astia Soft. So these are my three preferred film simulation in bracketing mode. The next setting is the auto exposure bracketing. Sometimes I wanna take three exposures of the one shot. So using exposure bracketing, that makes your life a lot easier. With the one click, it'll take three separate shots at three different exposures. And auto exposure settings that I like to use, um, I will set this to frame and step. So I want it to still take three frames. I don't want too many, but the step here is one third. That's not much of an increment. Um, I like to shoot that at two steps, so I will set that. And now my auto exposure settings are also configured. Now the last thing I would do is customize my menu options on this camera. Uh, so we navigate down to the wrench icon again, go to user settings and go down to my menu settings. So I will add various different options. I will add a tone curve, I want to tweak that at times, perfect. Then I want to add the self timer option, which is further down. I'll add self timer. Then interval timer shooting. Sometimes I want to use the interval shooting settings in this camera and set it up and just shoot away. Next, I will set up, add the AE bracketing setting, the film simulation bracketing setting, and finally, I will add the ND filter. This camera has a built-in ND filter. So that means that by activating that ND filter, you can really slow the shutter down. Uh, so I love to use that from time to time. So I wanna add that as well to my menu options. So there you go. These are all the settings that I wanna add to my menu. And that's pretty much it. All right, guys, thanks for watching this video. If you found it useful, give it a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. And if you've got any questions, leave them down in the comments below. Um, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks for watching this video. I'll see you soon on this channel with more videos and more wonderful content. Bye-bye.